Hi folks, in this video I'm sharing some of my first-hand experience in over 10 years of working with solar power and electrical systems, a problem that the DIY solar power enthusiast is likely to face at least once in his journey is to find a solar panel or a whole solar panel array has good voltage but it does not produce any power when connected to a charge controller. That is to say, loading the solar panel down produces little to no power. As soon as the load is placed on the panel, the voltage drops significantly, yet no power is produced. This scenario can take several potential forms in DC electrical power systems. Learning about it can be one of the best decisions you ever made and can make all the difference in the world when troubleshooting solar power installations. The average person would probably start trying various things to troubleshoot the problem. For example, checking if the solar panel is damaged, whether it is clean or has a bad bypass diode, maybe a bad MC4 connector, or maybe it's shaded and doesn't have full sun exposure. But the fact is a solar panel should produce at least some power even when it's not in full sun. So what's wrong here? The first thing that should come to mind when encountering such a condition and such a behavior in an electrical system is a single word. It's called resistance. Previously, I made a video called How to Use Solar Panels and Ohm's Law to Drive DC Loads Directly. If you have not seen that video, I highly recommend watching it. In that video, I explain how to calculate voltage, current, and resistance in a PV DC circuit. I also mentioned that solar panels have a specific characteristic called internal resistance. Internal resistance of the solar panel is what causes the voltage to drop significantly under load even when it is functioning normally under ideal conditions but it is supposed to deliver current, or amps, and produce power in that state. And our example solar panel isn't producing any power, just voltage. So we have a scenario where we load a solar panel down, the apparent voltage drops, but it produces no current and so no power. Or sometimes it just kind of works, but power output is extremely weak. Let's learn and understand how to troubleshoot this kind of thing. Let's start with an example. If you have an MPPT charge controller connected to the solar panel, it might sweep the panels for MPPT or maximum power point and show the solar panel voltage drop as you normally expect when the panel starts supplying power. Yet in this case, no current flows into the battery. So the charge controller is unable to charge the battery or maybe it charges very slowly. Now it does not need to be a charge controller taking power from this solar panel. It could be anything, but we'll stick with a charge controller as our load in this example. So you load up the panel, the voltage drops, but there's no power. What's going on? Again, the first thing you should think about when seeing this kind of behavior in a DC electrical system is resistance. Ohm's law, or I call it Ohm's formula, states that the resistance, voltage, and current in a normal electrical circuit are all interrelated mathematically and can be calculated. If you want to learn Ohm's formula, then please check out the videos linked in the description. Anyway, if the problem is resistance, then where is that resistance? We already know a solar panel does have some internal resistance and this is normal. So what can actually cause this behavior is additional resistance, which has been added into the DC circuit and is aggressively limiting the current flow. When the charge controller tries to draw power in the form of voltage and current, or amps, the voltage drops as you expect on a loaded panel but no current flows because of the high resistance somewhere in the circuit. And the truth is, the actual solar panel voltage measured right at the cells probably did not drop much at all, but rather dropped only at the point you are measuring or trying to draw power from. Because of the unwanted resistance in the circuit, you can't actually draw enough current from the panel to drop its actual voltage, because resistance is dropping that voltage before it gets to your charge controller, thereby preventing you from getting any current or power. To the average solar power enthusiast, this behavior in a solar power system might seem like a mystery, but the one who studied up on Ohm's formula already knows exactly what's happening, often without even troubleshooting or checking anything. The culprit is very likely to be additional, unwanted resistance somewhere in the circuit. In other words, to use simpler terms, somewhere there is probably a bad connection or something impeding the current flow in the electrical circuit. It could be a bad or broken crystalline cell, a burned up circuit breaker, a loose connection, or maybe a bad MC4 connector, a bad wire, or a bad panel if there are multiple solar panels connected in series. To help make this easier to understand, let's imagine you have a simple 12 volt battery and a light bulb. You connect the light bulb to the 12 volt battery and it lights up. Now you could use Ohm's formula to calculate the resistance, the current, and the voltage in this DC circuit, but I will skip that here to keep this video short. Anyway, imagine adding a very high value resistor in series or in circuit with the light bulb. Do you think the light bulb will light up? The answer is no, it will not light up. That is because the high resistance is not allowing enough current or any current to flow into the light bulb and so it does not light up. The resistor blocks or impedes current flow. In order to light the bulb, there must be the presence of not only voltage, but also the availability and flow of current or amps. You need current or amps plus voltage or pressure as I like to think of it to supply power in watts to light the bulb. 
The high value resistor won't allow any current or amps to flow, so no light. Current can be thought of as the quantity or flow through the wire, whereas voltage is potential pressure that might be available to run your load. Although it is not necessarily technically correct, I like to think of electricity as water in a water hose. Water pressure is voltage, pinch the hose and that is resistance, and the gallons per minute flowing would be current. It's also worth noting that the multimeter doesn't really draw any current, so the voltage doesn't appear to drop when you place the multimeter on the terminals to measure the voltage. In a normal solar power system, you would want to have minimal resistance in the connections and wires feeding the whole circuit. When you have a bad connection, it could manifest as follows. Wires and connections could heat up, there could be low power output, or even no power output at all. So the first thing I check on a solar panel that drops its voltage, but does not output any power or current, is obviously the MC4 connectors. I mentioned this in my video, 10 things to learn about solar, link is in the description, but that isn't the only potential source of the problem. Unfortunately, there can sometimes be problems in the solar panel's junction box, and even the bus bars and connections encapsulated in the solar panel itself. I have personally experienced this problem several times, one time in particular on a brand new 100 watt solar panel that hadn't even been in service for a month. I figured out what the problem was, it was of course exactly what this video is about. There was a very bad connection with extremely high resistance in the junction box. When I would place a multimeter across the terminals of the solar panel, the voltage was very good, as expected. But as soon as I place any load on the panel, the voltage dropped to nothing and no power was produced. On the surface, this is perplexing behavior, but understanding Ohm's Law formula will ensure you can troubleshoot and tackle these kinds of issues with relative ease. After watching this video, if this happens to you, it should be less of a mystery and perhaps you will save some time. In an effort to help beginners in solar, I leave a lot of details out of my videos to keep them as short and simple as possible. This is actually not what I prefer, but it seems to be what most people want. If you are interested in seeing a more detailed video about any topic, please leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see or check out the community tab where you can vote or comment on topics you want to see. I hope this video helps you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.